Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the uncommons and commons that you're going to want to keep your eyes out for as you're opening your packs of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So, let's get into it. The first card is an uncommon, Sandstorm Verge. This is a 14 mana land desert, it's got three shields, and at the beginning of your turn convert four gems to the most present color on the board. Also activate two, your opponent's first creature can't block and can't attack until the beginning of your next turn. This card just is really good to me. I, I, I'm kind of curious why it's an uncommon. I mean, I appreciate that it is because it means that more people will be able to get it more easily, but this is a really powerful card. So we're getting a few cards now that are gonna be converting gems to the most present color on the board, which means that this conversion will more likely than not give you a match or multiple matches for mana and loyalty, which is great. But then also we've got this activate two to make it so your opponent's first creature can't attack or block. Furthermore, it's a desert, so we could run it in some kind of weird desert tribal-y sort of deck with that worm to just sort of have fun, and the worm destroys gems, which would trigger this activate and make us so your opponent's creatures couldn't attack and just have a whole bunch of fun with that. Furthermore, we could have it with desert, right? Like actual desert, not this. And then making our opponent's creatures not be able to attack means that we're going to be having more creatures down for desert to do naughty Nelly things. And well, yeah, this, this is a really cool card, especially if you pair it with other things that will convert. I could, you know what? Don't pair this with desert. Don't pair this with the desert itself right? You're converting gems. Converting this with desert itself, bad idea. Cool card though. Very cool card. You're not going to want to pair this with desert itself because this converts gems and desert doesn't want you converting gems. But yeah, very, very cool card. Definitely will want to use this. We've got a bunch of other things that do this, convert gems to the most present color. So yeah, on that thought, we've got Conduit Pylons. Seven mana, three shields, another desert. When this support enters the board, surveil one. Look at the top card, decide if you want it or not. And then at the beginning of your turn, convert two gems to the most present color on the board. So three shields is very reasonable for this, especially for a common. Seven mana is very low, and converting two gems to the most present color is just fantastic. Just sort of goes with that whole idea of running some kind of potential desert tribal thing, uh, especially with, with our previous card over here, the Sandstorm Verge. And yeah, this card is just really, really cool. I wouldn't run it on its own necessarily uh, because converting two gems to the most present color is not a lot. But if you're running it with this, converting six is. So I would put those together. I think that'll be really cool. I'll be trying it out myself. So I just need to pull them. Next up is Arietti's Lullaby. This is 8 mana to destroy the first opposing creature and gain 6 life. This is a very reasonably costed removal card that bypasses ward or hexproof because you're just destroying the opponent's first creature. It just obliterates Phyrexian Vindicator, which is an incredibly annoying card. That thing's probably going to be first on the battlefield, so it'll just get rid of it. Um, and I like that, just that it gets rid of some special forms of evil from the battlefield. And... Yeah, gaining 6 life, 8 mana, destroying the first opposing creature, bypassing Hexproof and Ward, that's a big win to me. This is a great card. Being a common is fantastic. It's white. Really, really good card. Next up, Armored Armadillo. I know it's an armadillo. I just like to call them armadillos, just like how I like to call tortoises tortoise. This is an 8 mana, 0, 4. It's got Ward to drain 3 from your hand. It'll be pretty sticky because it's got Ward. And when you cast a non-creature card, this creature gets plus X plus zero until end of turn equal to this creature's toughness. This is going to be a common that I'm absolutely going to be breaking and making really, really big in a loop deck and just being really amused by how big it gets because this gets this every time we cast a non-creature card. And if you're making a loop deck, you're probably just casting a bunch of spells. Getting four power on this 
Every single time you cast a spell is going to be pretty reasonable. If you wind up playing multiple copies of this, or you're running something else in the deck that's going to increase its toughness, then this is just going to ramp up even faster and kill your opponent pretty quickly. No, I don't think this is an overpowered card. I just think it'll be a really fun card that you'll be able to have some training grounds shenanigans, and this will be a training grounds hero. So, really cool card, love the design, can't wait to play with it. Reach for the Sky. Thank you, Woody. This card is pretty cool, too. 10 mana, support card, enchantment, aura, 4 shields, it's got flash, and at the beginning of your turn, your first creature gets plus 3, plus 2, and gains reach. When the support is destroyed, draw a card. So, I think this card is really cool, because it reads, at the beginning of your turn, your first creature gets plus 3, plus 2, and gains reach. Meaning that every turn, it should be doing this. You should be giving your first creature plus three, plus two, every single turn. So this is going to make it so that your little reach critters are going to be able to block a lot more as they're going to be getting more toughness, which is going to sort of pseudo heal them in a way. You're going to be giving them more power, and it just looks like an all-around solid card. People who have, like, smaller collections, this is potentially going to be a big-time game winner. I remember back when I was starting, I used Mantle of Webs a lot. There were a lot of cards that I paired that with, and... This is just going to be a better version of that because you're going to be getting this boost every single turn. So really, really cool card. I like it a lot. Next up is Betrayal at the Vault. Just another card that I think will be really cool for players with like slightly smaller collections. I'm trying to consider everyone when I'm making these chase lists and sort of what what could be good. So 12 mana, your first creature gets a permanent plus 8 plus 8 buff and fights target opposing creature. So It'll probably kill your opponent's creature, right? Giving it the plus eight, plus eight. And then just having that extra plus eight, plus eight be like a permanent boost is pretty cool. And you could also run it with like Reach for the Sky as an example, where you're just increasing the power with both of them and they're both going to be common uncommon. So pretty reasonable to get. And you could even put it on the Armadillo where you're going to boost this thing's toughness to 12. And then this thing's going to get plus 12 when you cast it anyways to get up to plus 20, and that could be kind of funny. So, yeah, there's some cool stuff you can do. Very cool stuff you can do. I like it. Lively Dirge. 10 mana. It's got Spree. Spree 1, you're going to destroy the top two creature cards from your library, just throwing them into the graveyard. Spree 2, return the first creature that costs 12 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. I definitely like this. I love Gather the Pack. This is going to throw things into the graveyard. But then it's also got this added bonus of bringing things back. So... Having to have creatures that cost 12 or less takes away from this a little bit, but it is an uncommon, so, you know, yeah, 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 you gotta pick your battles. This definitely looks like a fun card, though. You can be, you can be sure that I'll be playing with this at some point, maybe even with this and Gather the Pack together, just for some Graveyard Shenanigans decks. I love me my Graveyard Shenanigans, and this card looks really cool for that. Next up, we've got another land. This is an eight mana land. It's another desert. It's got three shields. And at the beginning of your turn, convert two gems to your Planeswalker colors. I just, I love cards that convert gems. Um, and this to your own Planeswalker colors. I really like that. And so you can run this with your mono walkers and get a lot of mileage out of it. Do not run this with a duo color walker. Do not run this with a tricolor walker. But if you're a mono pl player like I am, this is a really good card, and it's colorless, so you can run it in any monocolor Planeswalker, which is really nice. Just guaranteed conversion, you can use it in your popper plus objectives. I like it. Good card to add to the game. The last common that we're going to be going over is actually just a cycle of commons, where we have a whole bunch of them that basically just all do the same thing, but slightly different. So uh, it's a new desert, it's seven mana. It's got four shields. When it enters the board, you're going to deal one damage to your opponent's Planeswalker and each creature they control. And at the beginning of your turn, convert four gems to color or color. So I know that I'm missing one from this list. The, the image wouldn't download from the website. Uh, it said that it had an error, whatever. But uh, we've got white, red. We've got green, white. We've got blue, red. We've got black, green. We've got black, white. We've got black, red. We've got blue, white. We've got blue, green. And we got one other. So we just got, well, just a whole bunch of these, right? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, maybe, maybe it is every color combination because there's 10, there's 10 combos or something, right? No, I'm, 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 I'm tripping here, right? Red, blue, red, white, red, black. Red, green. Oh, maybe there is every color. Well, yeah. Still, 
Really cool cards to have. Definitely great for newer players who just don't have some of the big converters yet. Converting four is very significant. Very, very significant. And if you've got ways of just playing a whole bunch of lands, this could be really good. Once again, with the masterpiece that brings a whole bunch of lands in, you could do some silly shenanigans killing your opponent with just a bunch of these coming down. But there's other better things you can do with that. Nonetheless, still really good land cycle. Love that they're adding it. So that's it for my comments and uncomments. Definitely some really cool ones to keep your eyes out for. Let me know if there's anything you think I missed. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.